Empress Messalina stands on the steps of the brothel. It surprises no one to see her there. Her late night moonlighting as a call girl meant she frequently had her share of the men that walked in. Tonight, however, she wasn't there as a worker, but a woman with a goal. The Empress walks up to the Lady of the Night with the highest reputation for satisfaction and declares that she will be Rome's next top hooker and challenges her to an unusual competition. 24 hours, sundown to sundown, as many men as they each could please. The one who wins gets the title. At the end of the 24 hours, a winner was clear. The head prostitute pleasured 24 men, the empress, 25. We can find the dramatization of this story in Pliny the Elder's writings. Seneca the Younger, Tacitus, Suetonius, and Cassius Dio also wrote about Messalina's notorious promiscuity. So if all of these Roman writers wrote similar antidotes about her, that means it had to be true, right? Right? Let's get started. Valeria Messalina was born sometime between the years 17 and 20 CE. We actually don't know much about her other than what her enemies and detractors had to say about her. Messalina married Claudius, her first cousin once removed. She was also the second cousin to Caligula. Yeah, that Caligula, who was still the emperor when they wed. Messalina and Claudius had two children together, Octavia and Britannicus. We'll come back to Britannicus later. Marriages between members of the imperial family tended to be political ones to keep the power within the family and thus preventing outsiders from taking control. In other words, a lot of kissing cousins and nieces and uncles and... Messalina became a complicated figure in Roman writings. One story had her convince Claudius, after he became emperor, that her stepfather planned a coup to assassinate him after she had a dream about him. And that stepfather was promptly executed based on nothing but that dream. Or when Claudius' son-in-law accidentally, on purpose, was killed so that Antonia, Claudius' daughter from a previous marriage, would not have any influence or rival her son, i.e. have a grandson that Claudius might favor more. Julia Livia, Claudius's niece, was also executed because she was either a potential rival for Claudius's affection or for having an alleged affair with Seneca the Younger. If true, Messalina's actions were not uncommon for the women in her family. Her actions secured her place in the imperial court if she could get someone assassinated, it wouldn't take much to find herself in the same position. Even in the most powerful family in the known world at the time, women had no power but to influence the men that they were close to. Messalina only had one affair that we know of, with a senator named Gaius Silius, and it's the one that led to her death. Being in her 20s and in a loveless marriage to a man 30 years her senior, she fell into the arms of Silius. It's clear they had a strong affection for each other, as Silius divorced his wife to be with Messalina. Messalina then declared she had divorced Claudius. The only problem with this is that she failed to tell Claudius about the divorce. And then Messalina and Silius married while Claudius was out of town. An even bigger problem is that Claudius saw the sham marriage as an attempted coup. Why would his wife marry someone else unless he would not be around for much longer? Claudius had Silius killed, and Messalina chose what they considered an honorable death by suicide in the presence of her mother. Later sources claimed she couldn't go through with it, and the Praetorian Guard killed her instead. 
However, these claims come from the same sources that seem to embellish on Messalina's promiscuity and wickedness. So how did one affair become sleeping with hundreds of lower class men while working late nights at a brothel? Well, it takes pissing off the wrong writer. Meet Seneca the Younger, a prolific writer, senator, and master orator. He is one of the most influential philosophers of all time. If you've ever had to sit through a philosophy class and discuss the problem of evil, you can blame this guy for that. As a quick note, he is referred to as Seneca the Younger to distinguish him from his father, Seneca the Elder, who was also a famous writer of his time. I will be referring to Seneca the Younger as just Seneca. During Caligula's reign, Seneca caught the ire of the jealous emperor for his public speaking skills. Caligula then called for Seneca's execution. However, Agrippina, Caligula's sister, intervened. She had become an admirer of his works and convinced Caligula that Seneca had been ill for a while and would probably die soon anyways. But Seneca survived his illness and thus his life was spared. This made Seneca a lifelong supporter of Agrippina's. And that became a problem when it came to Messalina. When Claudius became emperor after Caligula, Agrippina and her supporters felt that Agrippina's son Nero should succeed him. Messalina felt Britannica should succeed Claudius as he was his only living son. As both boys were still toddlers, and with Claudius pushing 60, being the mother of the next emperor was a very powerful position to be in. Messalina tried to thin out Agrippina's supporters through execution or exile, and the island of Corsica became Seneca's place of banishment for eight years. A lot of Seneca's works are lost to history, but his influence on other writers never waned. But why did Seneca and others go after her sexuality, claiming she had over 150 lovers if simply attacking her character had been the goal? Well, for one reason only. You are not the If he could put the parentage of Britannicus into question, then it lessened the claim to the throne. Messalina sleeps with anyone. All of her lovers could fill the Colosseum. His father could just be some random Roman walking the streets. Seneca had the motivation to write her as a promiscuous harlot. He stood squarely in the middle of the Roman political landscape. But what about the other writers like Pliny the Elder, Tacitus, Suetonius, and Cassius Dio? Pliny the Elder, who was a few years younger than Messalina, served in the Roman army and therefore was nowhere near Rome or the imperial family during these events. What he did have was Seneca's mentorship in writings. And Pliny the Elder wrote about Messalina's alleged brothel escapade decades after her death. Pliny the Younger, his nephew, took up his mantle after Pliny the Elder died in an unfortunate volcano accident. Pliny the Younger, Tacitus, and Suetonius were contemporaries that traveled in the same writing circles. A lot of biases fill their writings. Suetonius wrote most of the Julia-Claudian dynasty as weak, evil, or stupid. Tacitus only cites one source in his works about Messalina. That's Agrippina's memoirs, the woman who hated her. Add the fact that they wrote their works roughly 70 years after Messalina died, which means none of them had first-hand accounts of the events. Cassius Dio was even farther away, writing 150 years after Messalina was around. He also had some questionable archetypes of women. Uh, you can guess which one Messalina fell into. And again, he used the writings of those who went before him. Not that you shouldn't read any of the works of these writers, but keep in mind that they are far from fair and balanced. 
Each of these writers have their own political beliefs and agenda they put into their works. It is also difficult to fact check when everyone who could have been an eyewitness is dead and all you have are the scrolls of yet another dead guy with an agenda and a bone to pick. Without context, everything they've written can seem like it's the whole story. When actuality, it floats closer to some version of ancient Roman TMZ, a hybrid version of gossip that became a game of telephone that everyone eventually just took as facts. In the aftermath of Messalina's death, Nero eventually became emperor instead of Britannicus. And then Nero had Britannicus executed. And then his mother Agrippina was executed. And then he eventually had Seneca executed. So maybe not your best draft pick there, Seneca? Claudius and Agrippina destroyed everything we could have known about Messalina after they married in a damnation of her memory. So, did Messalina truly deserve the treatment she received after her death? She certainly didn't bang half of Rome or spend her nights working at brothels. She died around the age of 30 with a legacy that could fill tabloid headlines for eons. Who she is became lost to history. So I guess we'll never know. My name is Cato Jones. Thanks for watching.